Lisa Lanier is our official attorney of this program, has been for years. A pleasure to have her on every Friday. She goes inside several legal cases and solves them for us. LanierLawGroup.com is the website. And a couple of things to talk about. Lisa, are you like me? I don't know if you know, I was in the parking lot of my uh, voting site yesterday and was so torn on who to vote for, I couldn't even get out of the car. I kept opening the door and closing it, stroking my cockapoo. Have you ever done this, Lisa? <laughs> no, I'm usually pretty decisive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, went to my, I went to my polling place yesterday because mm-hmm. uh, my oldest is in from college and we were going to vote together. And the line was, they said they thought, two hours long. My God. It wrapped around the building. So we left. It was yesterday afternoon. Uh, we're going to go back this morning and hope it's, well, maybe it was just that first day. Excited. See, I'm not the only wow. one. I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, I left. Yeah, I was like, are. I'm not waiting in that line. <laughs> no, Mason, not that. Yeah. My kid hadn't had lunch, and it was like 2.30. I was like, no, we're, we're going home. No, we'll do it. <laughs> you, got, you got a couple of weeks to do this. Wow. Thing. There's t- there's more yeah. time left. That's something. I'm getting a lot of great positive feedback saying, good, yeah. good for you for weighing your choices. Take care of your mental health. Take yeah. care, care of your mental health. Let me say this also. Uh, this is the first time Lisa's ever responded like this. Yesterday, I told her, here are stories we're going to go over, and we're going to start with a question about the Menendez brothers and this push to get them out of prison after 35 years. And Lisa said, and I'm quoting now, I'm so into this Menendez brothers case, I had a sex dream about Lyle. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa. I did. It was, I don't know what's wrong with me. No. <laughs> I know the feeling. Lisa, was it murder trial Lyle or current day prison inmate Lyle? <laughs> <laughs> young Lyle, old Lyle. It was it was a young Lyle. No, yeah, not not super young because that would be even more weird. But mm. um, no, you know what it was? I think it's just a it's a perfectly natural trigger for this sort of thing. It was after the shower scene, which is weird, you know, because it was like mm-hmm. incestuous and you know whatever, but. Um, but, you know, full frontal nudity, and the dude is hung like a porn star. So I, I mean, have you to know. tell you, I want to say, <laughs> let me say, okay. I need a time Chris out. Chris calling. I don't know ex- what we're talking about Let me explain here. this. A couple of things. <laughs> they do show Lyle full frontal. Is it Lyle they show full frontal? I, I thought it was Eric. Uh, maybe it's Eric. It might have been Eric. Yeah. It might have been Eric, but Lyle's the one I had to dream yeah. about. Yeah. It's Eric. Yeah. It's Eric, yeah. I think you're right. It is Eric, yeah. yeah Eric. Uh, what, why? Oh, okay. Well, first of all, they show Lyle and Eric in the shower together as if they had an incestuous relationship. The mom walks in on that. Right. They claim, by the way, that's not true. And it was like right. when they were like 20 and 18. Then in prison now, it's intimated that Eric did share sexual favors with other inmates. And at one point, he's standing in the shower and turns, and I'll quote Lisa Lanier, he's hung like a porn star. <laughs> By the way, is that his arm? It is not. No. <laughs> no. <it's- laughs> By the way, he's claiming that's all him. Okay. Oh, really? Many, many people said, oh, yeah. oh prosthetic. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And he says, uh-uh, that's me. The actor. That's yeah. me. That's right. That's no. Right. Yes. Yeah, no. no. He says, no yeah. prosthetic, all me. Yeah. Wow. Let's face it. Yeah. That's impressive. I mean, it re- well, we're all we're all going to have a sex dream about him if we watch. It. I'm telling you, it's like it's something. Yeah, but that it, was, it's something. Yeah. Well, I, I hear Is there something you and Biggie would like to confess, Kelly. Well, when I saw it, I was like, that can't be him. I, I mean, that is. Yeah, like, no, everybody geez. thought it was a prosthetic, but he's yeah. gone on record saying, nope, that's me. Yeah. Well, I mean, these guys. Well, are I said that's it. <laughs> Oh, that's nothing. Look at me. <laughs> Is that all you got? Is that all you got? No, uh, I hear that young women are just dying to now meet these actors who play uh, Lyle and Eric. They I mean, had the same reaction to the actual brothers. Yeah, just like in the nineties. I mean, the brothers have been married in prison. You know, one of them married twice in prison, and still Biggie has says he's given up on love. Lisa, <laughs> he's through. Our own Biggie, who's not behind bars and has not murdered anybody, is still looking for love and has given up. Whereas Lyle and Eric, they've got their pick of folks. I'm sure as soon as they get out of prison, they'll get divorced and marry some other young person. You know, that's well, how you know the, the solution, Biggie. You know, if you end up like you know going to jail for murder, then then you suddenly you become a really hot ticket. I don't know if you've noticed that, but there's that's this true. whole right. there's this whole group of women out there that and men who who really you know have a fetish for people who are like serving life behind bars or even death row. Oh yeah, I mean these guys. Well, when they were part of it is because they're unattainable. You think that's you know, it? It's, yeah. it's well, part of it. Oh, I mean, it's a, they're, they're beating women off with a stick. These I, know, yeah. I know. Well, yeah. and, and Lyle and Eric, I mean, they were young, good-looking guys when yeah. they committed this horrible crime. And here they go. So do yeah. you think that they – and I, let me say this. I, here's how I feel about it. Even if they were, and I do believe they probably were uh, abused. I know they were mentally and verbally and probably physically. Uh I still think they did not have to resort to killing their parents in cold blood. And that was over the line? I think that was over the line. I think that's over the And so I still think, 
I think the original verdict should be upheld and they should stay in prison for life. Plus, the way they reacted after the shootings in the late 80s, they concocted a story about the mafia doing it. They went out and spent their parents' money like it was just, you know, a free holiday. And I don't think they would have ever gotten caught if Eric hadn't told his therapist. So tell us, Lisa, what are the odds there that they do get out of prison? I think the odds are good that they're going to get out of prison. I do too. Um, I do too. Because, um, well, so there's a huge amount of support for them in Los Angeles, and uh, and there really always has been, but it's it's bigger than ever. Mm-hmm. Most of the um, Menendez family, so Jose and and uh, Kitty's brothers and sisters and their offspring, who are you know cousins and whatever, they're all rallying behind these guys, and they're saying, look, that this you know the dad truly was a monster. He he truly did sexually abused these boys and not just that but just tormented them controlled them beyond belief um and was just i mean did horrible horrible things to them aside from the sex abuse which was horrible Mm -hmm. and um so what happened was you know the first trial ended in a hung jury in the second trial the judge was really really restrictive and didn't really allow them to put on evidence of the sexual abuse claiming that you know the the prosecution made strong arguments that it was made up Mm -hmm. and so a lot they were very restricted so now, you know, they have filed a writ of habeas or a petition for habeas corpus, and new evidence is being reviewed, one of which is a letter that a 13-year-old Eric Menendez, way before these murders, wrote to his cousin detailing the sexual abuse. That's been found in the now-dead cousin's um, effects. Mm-hmm. And this was a cousin who was – they tried to have him testify. He testified in the first trial, wasn't allowed to testify in the second trial. And then the other piece of evidence – is that a member of the Menudo band that was managed by Jose Menendez has come forward and said that he was drugged and raped by Jose Menendez. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the the DA saying, look, that, you know, back then we didn't believe these kids that they were abused. Now we have evidence that we do believe them. And so what I think is going to happen is in November there is a hearing, and I believe that the DA will say that they should be released for time served, which Mm -hmm. is 35 years. Yeah. So all that being said – Let's say they had believed them back then or it happened today. Still, they committed murder. I mean, that's right. they, they planned the murder and they did lie about the murder. And also their father sexually abused them. All I read is they got rid of their mother because they didn't want a witness hanging around. You know, they, they, they came up with, at least in the show, oh, she could never live with the guilt. And so we had to put her out of her misery. I mean, she really was somewhat more innocent in the whole thing, although... The argument on the other side is she allowed it to go on. She knew about it and allowed it to go on. She knew about it. Yeah, yeah the family said in one of these press conferences that the whole family, down all the way out to cousins, knew that if even even into their later years, that if Jose Menendez was in one of the boys' rooms, that you were not allowed to walk down that hallway. Mm. I mean, because he, because you know that was his rule, and that's what he was doing to him down it's there. It's disgusting. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. So you're right. It doesn't, you know, it, it's not a not necessarily justification for murder, but it's a mitigating factor that would be considered mm-hmm. in a trial normally. Normally, you would say, you know, like there's all all sorts of levels, uh, especially then in California, of sort of uh, murder that is justified in some way, and it could be a lesser degree where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, you know, you were because they said they were in fear of their lives because things that were kind of coming to a boiling point with the parents, and the dad had started like saying he was going to go get his gun and stuff. And so the boys were were in fear, they say, of imminent harm, which mm-hmm. does create a self-defense you know, possibility. But they also had – it should just be a mitigating factor in their sentence. Right. And he's saying, look, they've served 35 years. A lot of people would have served less for sort of a justified, you know, sort of a domestic abuse even yeah. homicide. Yeah. Uh, what about the argument that – I mean, it, it is sort of intimated in the show – that they would never have brought up the sexual abuse if their lawyer hadn't said, hey, we got to come up with something. What can you guys come up with? And Lyle Menendez spoke to someone in prison and said, watch me uh, you know, fabricate these tears. I'm really good at crying. That's why he wasn't even allowed to testify in the second trial because that would have been used in cross-examination. Do you think, you know, you still think that they would have had that testimony go in or, or, or he would they would have had that as a mitigating factor? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that it, that they were abused. I think that they, it's weird, you know, how they didn't want to talk about it and mm-hmm. they have never really talked about it because they, they still idol. I mean, this is crazy a lot of times when someone is really controlled by a powerful figure like this, especially a child who's abused, and they wanted his, his approval, you mm-hmm. know, right down to the very end. I mean, and they mm-hmm. didn't want to bring him shame and they didn't want to ever say anything 
you know, to go against him or harm his reputation. And I mean, it was, it's a weird yeah. sort of a love hate kind of a relationship. We've seen that dynamic play out a lot. If, you, if you're working this building, you see it daily. Yeah, it's uh, Biggie and myself, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <poor laughs> let me tell you Biggie. something. If it, let me tell you this. If Biggie ever kills me, I, he better not get out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> but no one walks in this room when the two of you are in it. That's right. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> if we're in this room mm-hmm. alone, that door shut. Nobody walks mm-hmm. down this hall. That's right. <laughs> the abuse on Biggie. Now, let me tell you something. Me- mental, verbal, it, l- l- all of the above. Not physical. Lisa. Well, if, mm, let me tell you this. Let me take that back. <laughs> if he kills me, you better not represent him. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Yeah, that better not happen. So, Lisa, given but, your given but if your, he does, he's going to be he's going to be very popular with the late. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. Of course, of course he that's will. A fact. That's right. Well, if if these things factors do kind of play out the way you might, the way you see this, Lisa, what are the chances the Menendez brothers or the Menudos? Mm. End up at CrimeCon 25 in Denver. Oh, God, we'll be there. Oh, My wife will I'm be there. Oh, I'm yeah. there. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. She'll be there, too. <laughs> Can they, if they get out, can they write a book and make some money, even though, is that considered profiting from their crime? Yeah, you know, um, they're not going to be exonerated from the crime. And um, I think California has a, uh, like a Slayer statute that does not permit them to um, directly, you know, be compensated for uh, the crime and, and details of the crime. So, um, but, but that is being challenged. And I don't remember what the outcome of that was, if mm-hmm. that was, um, successful on, uh, you know, constitutional grounds, but yeah, they, I'm sure they'll figure out a way to profit. From yeah. It. Well, at the very least they'll do the speaking tour uh, yeah. and, you know, they'll, oh, yeah. they'll go to crime con and those kinds of things. Really, really interesting case. So much so it drove Lisa Lanier to a sex dream. Mm. I'm ashamed. I'm really ashamed. You know, it's really I'm ashamed bad. too. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm ashamed for so many reasons. <laughs> yeah. But it's not the, one of the actual Menendez's, is right? It's it's an actor. It's an actor that <laughs> that drove you to it. Well, I mean, listen. Yeah. These guys are played by two of the best looking guys you can't even imagine. Oh yeah. Know? And they they show them constantly, uh, shirtless and naked. Have, and have the actors stuff. made comments about how they? view wow. these the real people so the guy that played eric i believe has met the actual the actual menendez brothers mm-hmm. and um i think they support them and yeah, getting I, them out i bet they do they're unknown the actors now for the, now for, yeah the father is played by javier bardem and he has a nice job too oh he's good and the yeah. mom is well known who's the mom she's well known she's oh oh yeah she's been in so many she's been in like, big love secondary. and everything else yes yeah, she's in Shattered Glass. She's uh, you know that uh, she's blonde, not Laura Dern. No, no, no. But anyway, she's she was young then. But she's um, oh man, she's got kind of a funny name. Oh, Chloe Savini. S- yeah. Chloe Savini. Oh, yeah, oh, she's oh, oh, oh. that's it. She's she's the mom. In this case, I guess I would be Jose and Kristen would be Kitty and Biggie would be the kids. I, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, weight wise, I could represent both brothers. You're both brothers. <laughs> Which way's more, both brothers or Biggie? Push, push, push. I don't know. I'm not sure about this. And I've had thoughts of shooting both. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Chris did would get it too because they to put him out of his misery because yeah. he had to witness this. Right. What am I? Do? What I do? <laughs> nothing. You just witnessed my abuse of him. You did nothing, mom. You did nothing. Nothing. You just, you yeah. just yeah. stood by drink, mom. and let it yeah. happen. You, you drink, stood mom. by and let it happen while I abused him in here. Yeah. This is a story about a uh, high schooler as well. Uh, Hingham High School. The parents' names are Jennifer and Dale Harris. Hingham High School uh, has a student there who wrote a term paper. And used AI. But the kid who wrote it swears he didn't just go out there and say, write my term paper. He swore he just used AI for help. And it's not against the rules, like as research. And the parents say, hey, it's not in your handbook. They can't do this. Well, his punishment has cost him the chance to go to, they say, Stanford or MIT, which were her two of his big choices. And so the parents are ready to sue the school over this. This is them talking. They told us that our son cheated on a paper, which is not what happened. They basically punished him for a rule that doesn't exist. In my lay opinion, um, they violated his civil rights. Um, They treated him and punished him more severely than other students. He got a perfect score on the ACTs, and he's looking to go to Stanford or MIT or some of the top schools, and he's missed the opportunity already for rolling admissions. You can't undo the Saturday detention that you gave him, but there are some things that you can fix right now and do the right thing. Lisa, do these parents have a point? Was he punished too much? And they say the rule wasn't even in the handbook because it's new, it's AI. 
What are your thoughts on this case? No, I think this kid has like Karen and Todd for parents, and mm-hmm. this is BS. Oh my God, Karen so, and Todd. You, yeah, but That's you guys, funny. you guys sent me down such a rabbit hole with this case because I, yesterday when I was supposed to be doing my job, I spent hours reading Reddit threads about this because <laughs> it was great. So all these people who are parents at that school have been on Reddit talking about this, mm-hmm. and they say this is the biggest crock. Because everybody knows that the school has very stringent rules about not using AI to write papers, that it's actually presented at parent night in a PowerPoint presentation, and the children are given a handout at the beginning of school about how it's against the rules to use AI and how it's plagiarism. And you don't have to spell every little thing out in the handbook for it to be a rule. They made it clear that it was – and and everybody knows that. I mean – my, my kids were told when they were in, like, the fourth grade or something now, I mean, because it's been around for a while, you know, that it is plagiarism to use AI, and it's against the rules. And plus, it, it there's a huge risk of it being wrong, by the way, and the teachers can tell when you've used it. So, yeah, no, this kid was just a big dum-dum for doing that. Right. I mean, he did it himself. Yeah. And Karen, can, yeah. Todd, and Dum Dum. <laughs> the case of Karen, Todd, and Dum Dum versus the state. Karen, Todd, and Dum Dum, please approach. <laughs> and... If your case was continued yesterday, with Lisa, we know why. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> One of our real cases, yeah. a real client. Yeah. Continued? Do we just continue? Yeah. Shh. Okay. I'm reading. Send, I'm reading over here. Send them to my voicemail. Send them to my voicmail. Yeah, I'm right. reading a. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not taking calls. Right. I'm not taking any calls. <laughs> Push my three o'clock. We don't have it. More. Uh, you know, we got an interesting when the day we discussed that case first mm-hmm. about the young man with the AI. Yeah. Um, I got an interesting message from uh, a listener who teaches at the college level. And he says that, you know, how you can tell, sometimes, like Lisa pointed out, that sometimes you can, it's obvious when a sometimes a younger student mm-hmm. uses AI because the language isn't the same. Right. It doesn't match up. Yeah, that's right. But he said that at the college level, sometimes they use, the teachers use AI to detect AI. AI papers. Yeah. It, yeah. Chat box. Oh, you can. You, yeah. can, you can figure the it out. The hunter has become hunted. Right. We have the tools, too. The teacher has yeah. the tool just as the student does. That's exactly right. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Good. So you can't get away with it like we thought you could. There's one more uh, student story in the news, and we'll let Lisa comment on this. 13 cheerleaders at Evans Middle School in Lubbock, Texas, had first and second degree burns on their hands because their coach made them do bear crawls around the track. The coach told them not to do a certain cheer at a game. They did it anyway against her will. She she says it was inappropriate in front of a crowd. So punishment the next day she or that afternoon, she had them do bear crawls on the track. And some of them had blisters on their hands, first and second degree burns. It was very hot. They said that the temperature on the track approached 125 degrees. So the parents are saying, I want criminal charges brought against this teacher. Do you think she will be charged criminally, Lisa? I'm sure she'll be let go by the school. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I mean, it certainly is possible that she would be charged uh, criminally because I think that this goes, you know, to that level of of recklessness. I don't know if this coach was just, like, drunk with this power of being Mm -hmm. the coach or whatever. But, I mean, this was just – I mean, surely, yes, these kids needed to be punished. I think typically in in, uh, sports and and cheerleading – you, you make them sit out a game or something. Yeah. You know, you don't let them, you know, you, you do stuff like that. You don't, or, or there could have even been uh, probably some uh, academic consequence, I would think, like, you know, in, like an in-school suspension or something like that. Right. Um, but here to, I mean, literally one of the girls, the burns were so bad that she had to be treated at the burn center. I mean, this was mm. bad. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I saw, you know, again, went down that rabbit hole yesterday. Yeah, afternoon. Yes, yes, Lots yeah. of, Lots of photos uh, of these blisters and, and burns, and they're pretty bad. Ms. Lanier, can you help? It? No, no, I can't yeah. help. My son's still in jail. <laughs> <laughs> can we get the jailer? What? No. You said you'd. I'm you'd, busy. I'm you busy. said you'd be there for the year. <laughs> I'm busy right now. I should make Biggie do some bear crawls. That's my <laughs> that's my next thing. maybe a bear claw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Biggie's done bear claws, okay. not bear crawls. Yeah. She made him do crab walks. Too. Uh, yeah, you crab know. walks too. Oh. They're worse. Crab walks are horrible. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's Lisa Lanier. I'll tell you, we had three more stories to get to. We don't even have time because of your sex too good. Yeah, you're too good. You're too good today, Lisa. Fantastic report, as always. Find her at LanierLawGroup.com. If you need any kind of legal assistance, hire a heavyweight.com as well. Should get to you eventually. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Lisa. Fantastic, as always.